be at peace with no further schemes in any country, God. Let those who are royal and non-royal be at peace and be still so that we all may know that you, God, our righteousness, is also El Shalom, God, our peace. It is in the name of Jesus I do pray before you, most high God. Amen? Amen. You know, I came close to titling this catfishing. Do y'all understand what catfishing is? The new term of catfishing? Okay. And nobody to get the young people to explain it to me. Sometimes we think of things in one way and we have our hearts and our mindset towards something that isn't even real. So I looked at the quote of this old theologian and thought it's apropos. Either Daniel lied on a frightful scale or this gentleman came in connection with his God while asleep, while awake, during prayer, oh, that we would be so lucky to encounter God in all the things we do for God. Having a greater promise and a greater covenant, we accidentally run into God when we should be intentional about our interaction with the Most High God. Now, Daniel, I think I've told you before, is not in the Nadaim, the prophets in the Jewish book, but in the Ketuvim, the writings. They don't consider him a prophet because what he was writing was happening during that time, except for the prophetic visions that he gave. Next slide. <coughs> now, this doesn't get into all of his dreams. But revelation, if you have a revelation from God, what have the effects been for you if you have a revelation? Conflict of nations and heavenly powers. So, you know, I read this in a way that's a little different. I felt like the prince of Persia was just an influencer. We know what those are as well, right? Online, you have people that are professional influencers. They no longer call you a leader. You're just going to influence through the, the visual and what you have to say. And how you move in and out of social media. That's how we get catfished sometimes. You know, I, I think I almost went there because Monica and Benet over the weekend because I have had another week of being still. They were like, Mama, you need to see the highlights of catfishing. <laughs> and I was like, I do. <laughs> and I will tell you, what I saw were people looking for love just in the wrong places. People looking for intimacy in the wrong places. People looking for even a, a, an intellectual con connection with, with, with someone that, that could feed everything else and it was an illusion. So we say catfishing in my day that meant you were going to get your eat on. These days, no. It means someone's going to make an absolute fool of you. And what's scarier is usually your best friend. So I was watching and I thought, okay, God, how, what does this have to do with Daniel? It has everything. Daniel became the influencer in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. God utilized him as an influencer. And then, because Nebuchadnezzar thought he had the end with God, he got catfished by God. You don't know me, boo. He had to go graze with the cattle for seven years. That's why I thought about this as catfishing. But it is about your revelation of God and its effects. Because see, we have the effects of those who have, they say their revelation is this. See, I keep waiting for the people to tell me, what's your revelation? 
revelation of God. They don't tell me what they said on TVN. Don't you come and tell me what your mom, I need to know, what is your revelation of God? No matter how small. See, sometimes we think that's just for the older people. But you know, Daniel was a young man. Go to the next slide, Paul. A young man in the royal court. Nebuchadnezzar came in, whooped them up, took them into slavery. And Nebuchadnezzar would give me some of the, um, the young men that are smart, part of the royal family. You know, don't go give me nothing, you know, no junk or something that we beat up too bad and we can't use that. So here he comes with his friends. They give him a whole new name. You know, they're just young boys. Imagine if all of a sudden your babies get taken into another country, another culture, another God. Do you think they would survive? You pray in the air. But Daniel became God's influencer in the court of Nebuchadnezzar. Before he even gets to all this, a myriad of things are just happening. The man's going to kill all the, the prophets and the soothsayers because they can't tell him his dream and interpret it. The Chaldeans was like, at Kumi, who, who, who tells you the dream? You tell the dream, we interpret it. Nebuchadnezzar, no, 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 this dream is different. Daniel's about to be killed. And he said, excuse me, why about to get killed? Because no one can tell the king his dream nor the interpretation. Daniel said, my God will. And he gets a chance to spend time with his God, and boom, it's done. So when you start looking at all of the revelation, God revealed to him a dream that a king had. What were the effects of that? The effect was never going to say, Ooh, child, your God is God. Ain't nobody going to tell me no other God can do that. Daddy, your God's got it going on. You get the influence that's going on. See, sometimes you have to allow God to show God self big through you. And you wait for God to show you what that is. So then Daniel, again, was like, well, you know, I'm not going to, we don't eat meat to other gods. Excuse me, you're in the king's court. They go on a raw vegan diet and look better than anybody. <laughs> so when you get to what God is revealing about the 70 weeks, you do realize Daniel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, all these brothers are together. It's coming around the same time. Because sometimes we'll see Isaiah, 150 years, then this, then these brothers were working all together, hearing the different angles of what God was going to do. So now, in our country, imagine someone that has such a great revelation that it affects the leadership. We haven't had that happen. See, the influencers are even trying to get into Christianity and different things. Because, see, things have shifted. I've told you this a million times. You can't run a game on the young people. They got your number. So, uh, that, no. That's not what the Bible said. You know how I know my daughters used to do that. I told you one time I was in the car, and they were back there in their car seats. And I said, do you guys hear from God? Have you ever heard the voice of God? They were playing. Like, yeah. I said, how do you know you heard the voice of God? They were like, don't you know what he sounds like, Mama? Don't you know? Okay. <laughs> Let me take two steps back. Seventy weeks have been, declared, have been decreed for your people and your holy city. This was about the 70 years. Daniel lives to about 80. So you have to understand, he's starting to, to turn. Now, I done been in the line, I've been in line, then watching people trying to burn up my friends, trying to kill me because I wouldn't 
bow to some statue. So according to Jeremiah, the gig is about to be up. See, this was about to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make an atonement for iniquity. Bringing in everlasting, not temporary righteousness, but everlasting righteousness. See, that's what God wanted the children of Israel to hold on to. They just couldn't seem to grasp the concept. Because I do believe in the law. There is salvation written in the Torah. Mm -hmm. They couldn't all get past it. We know some people could do it. It was a lot of work. And then you have to understand, they were not going out telling the Gentiles nothing. So boom, God has them now living in Babylon with the Gentiles and their heathen ways. Did Daniel lose his righteousness?